Hey guys, I want to welcome you to our new series, Speaking the Father's Blessing. And I, I wrote this book not just as a teaching book. On the first part of the book, I teach, and that's what I'm going to do in this series. I'm going to teach some things that uh, will really give you the empowerment of your voice to speak, not just telling your children about your heritage, but also prophesying their future. Uh, leaving a legacy is vital for us. The righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You know, I live with this one simple goal, and this is the goal. This is the purpose of this series. Listen to me carefully. This, this is the purpose. I want to hear my children tell their children, we serve the God of my father. That's it. I, I want to wake up every day. And I want to make decisions and I want to live in such a way that I want to hear my children tell their children we serve the God of my Father. I don't want to blow it, guys. You know, most of you know I wasn't raised under my father. I, I was raised in a, in a uh, dysfunctional, addicted, alcoholic, and a serial adulterous family. So if I didn't want to repeat that pattern. I had to do something different. Coming to Christ helped me. And I got into the Word of God. I got into Proverbs. And I began to understand that I had to change my thinking, my stinking thinking, in order to align with God's Word. Out of that came this understanding of the voice of the Father, that my children had to hear my voice. I have to hear the voice of my Father, and I have to be able to speak to my children to hear him as well. So that's what this series is all about. And we're going to dig into this. This preview will, will kind of lay the groundwork for that. But after I teach, now this is why this is so important. After I teach this, there's 52 blessings, 52 blessings that I, I go through and teach you how to direct the course of your children's life. Let, let me just talk about uh, blessing number 25, just so you get a glimpse of what we're talking about. Favor. How, how, how much do you want your children to have favor? Well, this, this precept is God wants his favor to rest upon us, but the principle is favor is a gift of God. He's transferring a supernatural force to work on your behalf, uh, to work on your children's behalf to accomplish their purpose. You want your children to have intentional direction. Guys, listen to me. If you do not give your children a, a vision to pursue, the world will give them a, a fantasy to chase. If you do not give your children a vision to pursue, the world will give them a fantasy to chase. So they need favor, and favor works like a current, and it moves, it moves you and works on your behalf. It's powerful. I want my children to have favors. So I go through, I give you the principle, I give you the practice, and I give you the profession of faith to speak over that. And then I give you seven promises to speak this week. So this book isn't just about teaching you something. This is a, you know what, this is a tool. If you're going to do anything, you're going to have to have the right tools. This is a tool to help you raise your children and speak blessing over your children. I, I wish every father had this because you can trace every societal ill in America because of fatherlessness and the absentee or the abandonment of fathers. Well, this book will help fathers. This will help you. I promise you, this 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 one of the most important teachings I've ever had. Let's get into this. In fact, go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start there. And uh, he Hebrews chapter 11. Man, I'm glad you're with me. I, I, I know you're going to get something out of this. this. This is powerful stuff, I promise you. Hebrews chapter 11, looking at verse 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. You with me? It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God and called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his, as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. 
And even when he reached the land God promised, he lived there by faith. He was like a foreigner living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Guys, I got to tell you, this is an amazing truth. And there's so much here that I want to break down because what I want you to understand, and we're going to use Abraham as our example, what I want you to understand is how God leads us with his voice and so that you can lead your generation following you. Let me set the stage here just for a moment. First first of all, we, we need to understand Abraham. Where did he come from and why did God choose Abraham? Why did God choose Abraham? It's very important. I'm going to answer that in just a moment. It's really important that you uh, that you understand this process. Where did he come from? You know, there comes a moment when God says to Abram, and that's, we call him Abraham, because Abraham heard the voice of God and because God trusted him in his fatherhood. And God speaks to him and says, Abram, you're no longer going to be called Abram. You're going to be called Abraham. And I made you the father of many nations. Now, here's what's important. Because there's a subtlety in the name change. And God does this frequently in scripture. You'll see this. There's a subtlety in the name change. He goes from Abram to Abraham. Abram to Abraham. So Abram actually means my father is exalted. My father is exalted. The the man who is named Abram is the son of a man of stature. He's a man of influence. He's a man of uh, nobility. He is, he has, he has stature about him. But this is interesting He's the son of that man, of the exalted man. But what God does is says, you're not, you're not going to be called Abram any longer. I'm going to call you Abraham. So here's what Abraham changes the trajectory of a man's life because he's no longer pointing, uh, pointing to the stature of his father, but now he turns and he's pointing to the expansion of his progeny, his children. Do you see that? So it's not just about his heritage. Now, with this name change, he begins to forecast the future. You don't think that this is a big deal. This is a massive deal. This is a huge deal because you've got to understand where Abraham comes from. I'm I'm always looking for the backstory. I'm always wondering why, what's the backstory here? I don't just want to take it on the surface. I want to understand why this led to this. And when you, when you consider Abram and his call and God changing his name and God blessing him and why, and I'm going to explain that in just a moment, but you need to understand some background here. So let's find out where did this Abram come from? Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. This is the account of Tarak's family. Tarak was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran was the father of Lot, but Haran died in the Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth while his father Tarak was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and, his, and Nahor both married. The name of Abraham, Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Melka. Melka and her sister, Iscah, were the daughters of Nahor's brother, Haran. Remember, Haran dies. So he leaves Iscah and he leaves uh, Melka. Melka becomes the wife of Nahor. So he marries his niece. Uh, just like Abram marries Sarai, who is his stepsister. Uh, same father, different mother. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Tarak took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, 
his son Heron's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans, and he was headed to the land of Canaan, and they stopped at Haran and settled there. Tarak lived 205 years and died while they were in Haran. Now, I know I read quite a bit of scripture there, but you need to get this history. Okay, first of all, understand that the Ur of the Chaldeans is the, is the fertile valley, the Mesopotamian valley between the Tigris and the Euphrates River. It was the one of the first civilizations on earth. It was an advanced civilization. Here And here's why. The only way you can ever have a civilization, the only way you could ever build infrastructure and neighborhoods and, and the arts and so forth is that you have abundance enough that you're not scraping out a living. And so this area was so fertile and it was the byproduct of the Garden of Eden being in that area that this land was so fertile that it produced incredible resources so that people were not scraping out a living. People were able to start living luxuries uh, rather than giving, gathering and living in caves and, or, uh, you know, uh, temporary huts. They were able to uh, look at rocks and decide that we want to make bricks. And so they began to design bricks and engineer structures. And they began to build bricks and mortar and and design cities and landscaping. And, and it, it, it just a civilization because it was prosperous. It was fertile. It was um, advanced. In that day, it was the advanced place on earth. And with that also came... Uh, you know, this hunger for the arts of language. You know, we even today use some of the knowledge of mathematics and and uh, grammar from this period. Isn't that amazing? Now think about that. But this civilization also is a place of comfort. Tarak gets it in his mind somehow, some way, we don't know. But he gets it that it's his family's destiny not to come uh, and stay in or the Cadians. It, it's not their place to stay there. And by the way, um, you know, it's also called the Ur of Kasdim. So it's, it depends on how you pronounce it. Chaldeans or the Ur of Kasdim, the land of Kasdim. So this is this is the place of comfort. Torah gets it in his head that you know what it, it's better destiny for my family to go to Canaan. I don't know how he heard about it. I don't know if he heard from the Lord on it. I don't. All I know is he has it in his heart to go to Canaan, and this is extremely important. So his destiny is Canaan. Kind of put lock that in. Put that in your GPS. Your, your destiny is Canaan. Now to get to Canaan, now maps is going to take me not just straight over to Canaan. I'm going to have to go up north, uh, northwest, and there's a city up there that I can rest in before I go all the way down to Canaan. So as I'm traveling, as Tarak is getting there, he stops at a city named Haran. Now, this is important. Remember, the scripture said Haran had died. We don't know why he died. We just know that he died prematurely. And so here, Tarak gets to Haran, and the Bible says he settled there. Now, remember, where is his destination? Canaan. But when he gets to Haran, he stops. Now, this is one of the greatest points you'll, that you'll understand. This is very, very important. Listen to me. Your destiny isn't the promise that God has for you. Your destiny is where you stop pursuing that promise. If you stop short from what God has for you, it's your fault. 
because the steps of the righteous man are ordered, but you have to take those steps. Now, I see this constantly in men's lives. I see men who start out with hunger and drive and ambition and dreams and goals, and they have energy and excitement and the daily grind, the daily effort, the daily struggle, the daily opposition, the criticism, the challenges become too much. And they forfeit what God promises because, listen, of anything of great value is going to face violent opposition. So as you're progressing, as you're going to the promise that God has for you, you're going to have to resist and put the effort to keep in pace to get there. There's a lot of guys who get to a place of comfort in their lives and they stop. They settle for that. They get to a certain level of comfort and they just say, you know what? This is good enough for me. I'm willing to stop. I'm willing to settle. And then there's others who I think maybe Tarak fits in this one. And that is he experienced loss. Haran had died. He arrives in a city named Haran and it reminds him. Maybe it was a memorial and it reminds him of his son. And he just simply can't let it go. He can't move past it. You know, I've seen this in people who have, have experienced loss. And someone dies. And they just can't get over it. They cannot live past it. Or maybe they experience a betrayal. And they just can't get past it. They just keep chewing on the bitter morsels of that betrayal. So you've got to keep moving. You've got to keep taking steps. You've got to keep going. See, I, I have a lot of friends my age. I'm, I'm, I'm close to the, uh, my next decade. And I have a lot of friends in this next decade. That they're already forecasting their landing. They're already forecasting. They feel like they've accumulated enough in order to, to, to rest and, and be comfortable. You know, I just can't do that. I just feel like recently my, my purpose has been taken off. I, I just feel like I've worked all my life to get to this moment to where I can do what I'm supposed to do, and that is this, to speak to you, to encourage you, to be a man, to have authentic manhood, to be a father, to be a good husband. I, it's my purpose is to teach you. And a novice, and a young, a young man can't have this platform. Why? He doesn't have the gravitas. He doesn't have the experience and the bruises and the scars and the challenges that it takes to speak to men. Well, I come with those. I come with those with the challenge to keep moving, to keep pursuing, to keep going, because there's promises that God has for you that you need to keep going after. You need to keep pursuing. I've seen men sit down and they just give up. They're seduced by the sofa and they just give up. No, not us. See, this is the backstory of Abram. And you hear this and you realize, see, most people start here. Most people start at this next verse. Without getting the backstory, the next verse doesn't really make sense. Chapter 12, verse 1. So the Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I make, I'll make you famous and you will be a blessing to others and I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you and treat you with contempt and all the families on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed Guys, you, you, you read that and you think, wow, how in the world? The reason, you leave, the reason Abraham left his father is because his father stopped short 
of the promise. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to be to leave your father's short short stops. You got to be willing to leave the shortcomings. You got to be willing to leave the iniquities of your fathers in order to protect the destiny of your children. See, there are things, there are iniquities in my family past that I don't want my children to taste or know. There, there's experiences that I had as a child I don't want my children to know. I know the taste and the smell of sin. I've seen it. I don't want my children to experience it. Somebody has to step up and be the man. Someone has to decide. I, it stops with me. It's not going any further. I am stopping this. I am not going to be the coward that passes this iniquity on to my children for them to fight. Man, I'm speaking to somebody right now. Listen to me. I'm telling you. Are you going to be the man that steps up and says to you that says to your destiny, you know what? We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep pursuing. And it's not disloyalty for us to want a better life. It's not disloyalty for me to hear the voice of God to say go. A New Testament concept of this is in Mark chapter 10, verse 29. That no one has left a father, mother, brother, sister, houses, or fields for me as the sake of the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times in this present age. So there's a promise that God says, listen, if you'll hear my voice, I'll direct your steps and I will lead you to greatness and I will make you famous. I will give you influence. That's what that's all about. I will give you influence so you're no longer the son of an exalted father. You are now Abraham. you the father of many nations. Do you see what happened? You see what happened? Tarak is no longer the namesake. Tarak is no longer the exalted father because he did not keep moving. Abraham, Abram becomes Abraham. So I always wonder, what, what was it about Abraham? What was it about Abraham that got the attention of God? What was it about Abraham? So what was it about Abraham that got the attention of God? Genesis chapter 18. This is it. This, this is where this is revealed. Genesis 18, looking at verse 19. The Lord tells Abraham exactly why he was chosen. I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. The reason that God chose Abraham is because he knew that Abraham would father his children. That Abraham would do more than just have children, but he would parent them. He would father them. That he would give them direction. That he would give them a directional intent. And that he would hold them accountable to the path and the way that God has said for them to go. It, not just for Abraham, but for Isaac and for Jacob, he is setting a three-generational blessing. He's sealing it. And he says, if you do this, every family on earth will be blessed. I'm telling you guys, this is exciting stuff. I can't wait to get into this teaching. This is a preview. I can't wait to get into this teaching and, and bring this stuff out. You got to get this book, Speaking the Father's Blessing. It's available on Champion U. If you're already a partner with Five Star Man, you have access to this. You can go ahead and go right now. The book is there. The videos will be uploaded there. I'm telling you, 
this is literally, I, I, we shipped out 200 copies this week. And when I prayed over them, I'm thinking 200 men are going to be empowered with a tool to speak the blessing over their children. <laughs> Man, I can't wait. We'll talk to you next, next week. Hey, we'll talk to you next week.